How are you guys doing today? All right, welcome to uh, War Camp Miami. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started because uh, it's only 15 minutes here and uh, I got a lot to talk about. Uh, so hopefully uh, I can give you guys a nice uh, overhead of about some automation. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's called WordPress automation, but it pretty much is uh, automating your workflow. So if you are a developer, any uh, new developers, like first year? It's your first year developing anything? All right. This will probably help you more than uh, anything else. Uh, if you ever actually came to the meetup, uh, I had another talk that was very similar to this, but it was uh, more of a user level. I will have links to that uh, sometime later today, and you can look at that because um, that's very helpful, helpful as well. But uh, this talk is more uh, develop it, uh, <laughs> more of a developer base. All right, why should you automate your, uh, your WordPress development or your workflow? Uh, probably because you should. Uh, if you don't do that now, you probably should stop, stop doing whatever you're doing and uh, get, that, get that together, you know, because it's good to get your life together. So it's good to get your WordPress development together or your front-end or back-end development together. Um, oh, this doesn't, let me go, stay, stay still now. Uh, most things, most of the biggest reason why is as a developer, there's a lot of grunt tasks and things you don't want to do. Uh, with WordPress automation, it helps you avoid a lot of that. Um, truth be told, how many people are lazy developers? You can raise your hand. Lazy developers. Yes, yes. I am king of lazy development. I have assistants and I make them do all the work. <laughs> and I take all the credit, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> I even make them automate the work uh, because it keeps things consistent. Uh, it doesn't matter what level of development, you need to keep things consistent. Uh, it's, you might have multiple projects. They might be slightly different and vary from some time, but your core of your project should be always be consistent. It helps you get there to the point faster. It helps your team get there to the point faster. Uh, if you keep things consistent. So WordPress automation can actually help you keep things c consistent, especially when you want to make sure your code is standard with, uh, with whatever technology you're using. And of course, time is money. So if you're doing things differently or the long way, you're spending a lot of time. If uh, you have clients, you're dealing with clients, you're charging them a higher hourly bill compared to someone who's fully automated their system, which you know they know, hey, this work can take me four hours compared to someone that can take them six hours. So you're losing out on deals because you someone who saved two hours on work can actually jump on a better uh, some of the better clients out there. So you're losing money. Also, if you're not working for somebody or someone like me, you know projects timelines. You want to get there and get to them fast. So the best way of doing things is to automate it. So time is money, and uh, make sure you get things done. And of course, you have more times for other things. Uh, I like to play video games when I can. <laughs> uh, I also have a wife and kids, and they force me to do things like go to movies and watch kid movies and Disney movies. That I basically get on my phone until someone tells me to get off my phone type of deal. So, you know, it's good for work. If you, if you really care about that, work-life balance is uh, one of the biggest things that actually helps out. And because ever since I made sure I can automate almost everything I do, I have plenty of time to do other things, mostly to play video games. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> so when should you uh, start doing this? Uh, pretty much my thought process of this is uh, you should, if you're thinking about doing theme, if you're a theme developer, um, you should automate the way, the, the way you develop themes. Uh, I used to be a big time just creating themes. I, well, I'm big on design. And it will take me forever. And I got to a point that uh, I need to do this a lot quicker. So automation in themes is a big deal. Also, the same thing goes for plugins but especially when you have to deal with uh, WordPress in installations. So if you run an agency and you're constantly installing new, I'm sorry, inst installing new WordPress sites or 
for some reason, even working with themes and your client wants a whole website and you're just selling the website package, you need this installation to work out well. Even, I know if you're using WordPress multi-site, that seems like an easy way, but uh, you can actually automate the way you do WordPress multi-sites. I'll share a link a little later about that. Uh, where? In your local development. If you're not, if you're a developer, you're not using local development, you probably should start doing that. It's a good idea. Local development is the way to go because you can break things and not worry about it. Also, in your remote development, so you're pushing things from your machine over to a development server, there's ways to automate that process and automate um, things in your remote development. And then, of course, uh, production. I don't really do much automation in my production site. Well, there's a different type of automation I do there, but uh, I won't get into that today, actually. So how would you do this? So for me, locally, I use tools like Docker and Vagrant. Truth be told, I've been using Vagrant up to about a, a month and a half ago. Switch so over to Docker, it's actually saving more time. Uh, Docker's more industry, industry standard now, more than before, so it'd be good for you to take some time to learn Docker, to lose some local development. Uh, it, You've got to get comfortable with command line, which is a good good idea, but uh, it's just something you just have to pick up and learn. Also, Git, GitHub, I use GitLab. It was, uh, this is where how my work does. We use a lot of GitLab. Get local, your local Git, GitHub, that also helps out with development. This is my favorite tool of automation of them all. I, I remember showing you a few weeks ago, uh, WPCLI. Uh, this tool alone does a lot of amazing things. There's a, even a, a process with aliases, which actually even help you automate the automation. And you can do a lot with it. I'm not gonna go over this because there's a speaker coming in today and he's gonna go over that all with you. And you guys should stick around for that talk. Uh, there's tons of uh, task runners. Pretty much this is where the grunt works lie to avoid some of the, the grunt work might want to use a tool like Gulp or Grunt. They pretty much work uh, the same. I know I've been hearing stories of uh, developers using both. Don't know how exactly how they do that. It seems quite annoying, but uh, they, they make it work. So pretty much how these two tools work is that they'll minify your CSS and your JavaScript and a lot of other tasks, mundane tasks that you don't want to do. I know this because I'm very lazy, and when my student assistants say they're gonna minify this, I'm like, how come you didn't do this earlier in the process before you push this to production? So these are certain tools that you wanna make sure, certain tasks that you wanna make sure to be done well before you actually, uh, actually have to manually do it. I'm gonna give you a few resources, pretty much, uh, the first one is to Google it. There's a great, great resource guide right there. The keywords you probably want to look for is workflow and automation. So make sure you Google it, and you get to google.com, <laughs> and the keyword search, you type in workflow or automation or web development automation. You can probably do a few things, and you'll find tons and tons of places. But uh, I went ahead and make sure there's some, I call them lazy links. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, well worth it. I recommend any of these articles, especially this last one from uh, Elegant Themes. If you're a WordPress developer, theme developer, they have a great article, that ultimate guide. And uh, it'll actually help you a long way. Uh, no worries, I will, I will post something. It'll be on WordPress, you can find these slides. It'll, They'll hand it out some way, somehow. But uh, it helps. And I also have uh, the laser links. Uh, the two tools I believe you should really look into, um, the WP CLI and the Docker. Um, just to go over one of the processes I, I deal with, I generally get a, uh, 
uh, email saying that uh, some some research project is happening, and they tell me like, hey, we need X, Y, and Z, and this type of login interface. I have a GitLab repo that does certain things, and I pretty much tell my assistant, like, hey, we need to pull uh, project 305, clone it, and name it uh, Research Waterway. And all, they, all they're doing is doing a git pull. Well, actually, first, they're, they have a Docker installed. They create a new container. And then they do uh, our container environment is set to always the same, which is uh, pretty much Nginx with uh, PHP and some other uh, stuff installed. They pull from the, our GitLab repo. They do, they felt it's like a, it's not a form, but they pull, pull in a few things. And next thing you know, voila, we have a theme and default plugins and everything ready to go. And that's pretty much how it does. It takes them no longer than 10 minutes if, we are, if our Wi-Fi is slow. That's, <laughs> you know, it makes you know they pretty much have a full on site. And the rest of it's, of course, development work, which is, well, more front end work, which is, are we going to use React or are we just going to use uh, WordPress basic themes and some other things, depending on the project. But uh, what you need to do before getting automation is plan ahead. If you know you do these type of projects, have something ready, have something in your GitHub. Some G GitLab is a f it's pretty much the same, just a open source version of GitHub. And have things ready and prepared so the way you do your automation, you know what is supposed to be done. And whoa, oh, what's supposed to be done. Um, the next two speakers are going to be talking about uh, some other tools, but uh, I know one of them will be talking about the WPCLI which is well worth the, the time to sit down and go over it. I am uh, Gene Felisme. I'm a senior developer here at the School of uh, Computer Information Science for Florida International University. Uh, I can be found on Twitter. My website will show you nothing because I'm too lazy to do anything in there. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm glad I have a website open, <laughs> so <laughs> I got that far. Uh, you can pretty much find me around. And if you guys have any questions, I have no answers for you, but you can Google it. <laughs> All right? You guys, enjoy the rest of the work camp, and uh, stick around.